Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to make engraved tumblers. I'm gonna be doing several different types of tumblers, different sizes and different shapes and different things like that because today, believe it or not, was my very first time ever doing tumblers with my laser. I've been mainly just doing woodworking and engraving on wood and cutting wood and different things like that. So this was a whole new ball game for me and it was so much fun, it was so easy and I can tell you I'm absolutely hooked. <laughs> I cannot wait to go buy a ton more tumblers and try a ton more things. So I'm gonna be taking you through the entire process from start to finish everything you need, how to set everything up and get your settings dialed in to have great quality looking tumblers. So in today's video, I'm going to be using a Rotoboss rotary attachment as well as a Thunder CO2 laser and Lightburn as the software. So if you use any of these, um, it should be able to help you in some way, shape or form. Or if you just want to sit back and watch and just see how the process is. Either way, I'm so glad you're here. So let's go ahead and get on into this video and I will show you the whole process. So you're going to need some tumblers, fabric ruler, calipers, some totally awesome from the Dollar Tree along with a magic eraser, ignore how dirty it is, some painter's tape, a level to make sure that your tumbler is straight. A rotary attachment, I have the Rotoboss and I got it at Thunder. You're going to need your laser machine. I have a Thunder laser and I absolutely love it. And light burn. So first thing you're going to want to do is tape around your cup in a couple of different layers and I'll show you why in a second. Then you're going to take your calipers and just measure how wide your cup is from edge to edge. Okay, so first and foremost, you're going to want to lower your bed and please ignore this disgusting bed. I need to clean it. We do a lot of laser cutting, so ignore the mess. So lower your bed down and then the next thing you're going to want to make sure you have turned on is light burn. If you use light burn, you want to make sure your software is up and running and ready. Then you're gonna get your roto boss or your rotary attachment and you're gonna put it in your bed and you're gonna want to make sure you align it. So first and foremost, you wanna make sure it's on the right side, well for ours at least it is, I don't know about all the lasers, but the reason being is your rotary plug-in is right there. So once that's plugged in, you wanna make sure that you get it aligned and adjusted and straight. So how we did that is, as you can see, there's lines down here for the other, I don't know what it's called, a bed attachment. Um, so we lined it up with those lines, as you can see, one on that side, one on that side. And I don't know if I mentioned, but this has magnets on it, so it holds it down firmly. You don't need anything else to keep it and hold it in place. Once it's lined up that way, then we lined it up by adjusting the laser head dot with the dots on the two tops pieces here on the rotary boss, which is really cool and it was really easy to align. I thought it was gonna take a long time, but it didn't take any time at all. Once that was aligned, we were pretty much good to go. And next is to get your tumbler ready. All right, so here is how you put your tumbler inside of your attachment. So you're gonna click this little lever here and set your tumbler inside. So as you can see here, these knobs, it adjusts how tall your tumbler is. You can go, you know, turn it, was it clockwise or counterclockwise? Yeah, it depends. It just depends on how big your cup is. All right, next thing you're gonna need is a level to make sure that your tumbler is straight and you have it right in the center. And um, reason being is because your engrave is not gonna turn out very well if you don't. Um, you can use these knobs right here and right here to adjust it to get that right in the center. And once it's level, you're good. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you are focused. So you don't wanna use auto focus in this case, you want to manually focus. So from what I've researched and we tested it out, seven millimeters is the best way to do that. So you take your little handy tool you have here and just manually focus. Now, it's really fast when you try and move it and to get it right. So you're gonna go to the controller and you're gonna hit speed. So you're just gonna adjust your speed here and just have it a little bit slower so that you're able to focus it at the most accurate levels. All right, now that we've got it focused, we need to get our origin point set. So what we do here is, see the little blue piece right here? We are gonna line our laser dot with this. That's how we know we're straight in the middle. But we're gonna want to align this laser dot with the very tip top of our cup. All right, so you wanna get close enough to the top. I know we have some tape here, but we know about where the top is, which is right here. Once you have it where you want it, you're just gonna hit the origin button. So now that we have it level, we have it secure inside of our attachment. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our steps per rotation set up and I will show you how to do that here in Lightburn. 
So here we are in Lightburn. Our goal here is to find the steps per rotation for our rotary tool. This basically is a number that calculates how far around your rotary needs to spin to go a full 360 degrees. It needs to be calculated for each size object that you use in your rotary. Computer Creations here on YouTube also has a great video on finding this number. First thing that you want to do is go to the top panel, Laser Tools, and Rotary Setup. Here is where you'll find all the settings for your cup. You want to select your rotary type, mine is roller, check enable rotary, rotary axis is set to A axis. This top number is the steps per rotation. This is a roundabout what number that you would start with and it'll go up and down depending on how our lines touch and if they don't or do. More on that soon. The number that we're going to start with is 4,488. We're going to adjust as necessary. Next is your roller diameter. This is how big your roller is on your rotary that your tumbler rests on. This is where you use your calipers to get this number. The object diameter is what I showed you earlier with you using your calipers to measure your cup's diameter. It'll also auto-populate the circumference, so just leave that number alone. Next, make a rectangle that is the size of your cup. This is where that tape measure comes in handy. Measure the cup's diameter with your tape measure. This gives you a height of your rectangle. Then you'll measure the engravable area and this will give you your width. This is just a frame. You'll also make a skinnier rectangle that you will place inside of this rectangle that is going to check our steps per rotation. This needs to be the same height as the other rectangle, but the width does not matter as much. Notice I changed the cut layer panel over here to turn the output off on all but our skinny rectangle. The skinny rectangle needs to be on line mode, approximately 400 speed and 8 power. I do have a Nova 51 130 watt, so this number will vary depending on the power of your machine, so just adjust as necessary. You just don't want it going through your tape and getting onto your cup. Go down to the bottom settings, make sure rotary is enabled, start from user origin, job origin is set to the middle left, and send the job to the machine. All right, now we're gonna hit file, select our file, which is tumblers, hit enter. You can see the blue line here on the left-hand side, so we are gonna go ahead and hit start pause. So as you can see here, our lines overlapped, which means that we need to lower our steps per rotation down. So we're gonna go head on over to the software and try it again, and we're gonna just move our line down right under this line, and um, then we will check and see if that number's right. So here we are back in Lightburn, went to our rotary setup, and we're gonna adjust our steps per rotation. So since we were overlapping, we need to adjust our number down. If you were not touching at all, you wanna go up with this number. So I have no idea how my husband came up with this number. <laughs> he did some kind of little math calculation with adding how big the overlap was, so I wish I could help out more with that. But um, that is what we did to get this number, so let's see how that goes. Once you save that number, just remember to move your line down underneath where the other line previously was. So that way you don't kind of overlap your other line and get confused. Um, so that is what I did here. I just duplicated it, move it over, and deleted the first one. So here is the second take. It was extremely close, so we realize now we need to go kind of up a couple notches, and then it should be right on. All right, so this one was pretty much dead on the line. There's no overlapping. So this is pretty much as good as we're gonna be able to get it. So now we're ready to take the tape off and get our engrave started. So I also wanted to mention that you only have to do the steps per rotation each new cup size. Once you figure out settings for one cup type, you'll have the settings dialed in. So now that we have the sa our same rectangle and this is our template for our engraved space, this cup is going to have two designs for each opposing side. How you'll do this is make a line and center it using your center tool. Place the first graphic near the very bottom of your rectangle and the other graphic right above the middle line. Then delete your line when you're done with that. It's going to make them perfectly opposing. 
Over here in the cut settings, you'll want this orange graphic set to fill. And the settings that I liked for my 130 watt machine are 400 speed, 35 power, and line interval at 0.060. Make sure all cuts are turned off except for your engrave. Send file to machine and watch the magic happen. So here was our practice cup. If you can see, we had an old tumbler that was kind of getting old. Um, so we decided to use this as our practice tumbler since we got pretty much the same brand. They're both from Academy. If you have an Academy Sports near you, that is where we got it. But as you can see here, I practiced all over this one just to get the settings kind of dialed in and we wanted to make sure we had a practice cup so i encourage you if you're doing tumblers for the first time or you're wanting to kind of hone in your settings get a practice cup um, or an old cup that you already have and just practice on it to kind of get your settings correct so that is how we got it but i just wanted to show that to you all look how gorgeous these turned out it is so pretty here's this one this is a video game character, um, but these are like energy boosting something, so it's perfect for coffee. So that's the energy boost thing. So anyways, that one turned out so good as well. Settings are great. No. Now we're gonna engrave on this one. This is the Mars Steel Skinny Tumblers. These have very high ratings for engraving. So we're gonna go ahead and do a name going up and down this one.
pretty much wraps it up for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me engrave those tumblers. It was so much fun getting to test out different sizes and even different brands. And I'm definitely going to be going and purchasing a lot of tumblers and I can't wait to make them and be able to just personalize them because it's so much fun to be able to sell things and even make things that are custom and personalized. And I feel like the engrave on powder coating is so durable. Um, you know it's going to probably last as long as the powder coating lasts on your tumbler. So I'm very excited to get more into that and I hope that y'all enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one.